If you're looking around at this upside down world wondering what we're going to do, well, the answer isn't found in the White House or in the schoolhouse. The answer is found only in one place and in one person. His name is Jesus. And it's His anointing that brings us up to a higher standard. Learn more about how you can come up to this higher standard. Coming up next as Arkansas Live starts right now. <clears throat> I was uh, writing a reminder letter to all our partners the other day, and I wanted to share this with you. Uh, some of you will be getting this letter, but for those of you that are not on our mailing list or not on our partner list, uh, and you would like to support VTN, um, I have discovered that there are four things that we have learned uh, from our partners and why they support uh, VTN. Uh, number one, you trust us. VTN has delivered the good news to you every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Trust is so important. You have learned to trust VTN. And you can count on us. We're reliable. We'll never betray that trust. So trust is the number one reason people sow in the VTN. They trust us to deliver the good news every day. Secondly, VTN is a good steward of your seed. Believe me, we are accountable to God for how we manage your seed. We don't waste anything. Every seed you sow is precious to us. Psalm 126, 6. We realize that our partners and people that sow into VTN that give, and we have many of our partners, I don't know whether it's a majority yet or not, but most, a lot of our partners will renew their pledge every year without even having, uh, having to be asked because they see the value in supporting VTN and our mission. Uh, to our, say, our cities, our state, our nation, and our world. And third, VTN is good soil. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus said, when you sow into good ground, it brings forth 30, 60, and 100 fold. That comes from Mark 4.20. Good soil produces good fruit. And VTN is producing spiritual fruit in people's lives. The numerous testimonies that we get every time uh, we get an email or a letter or a partner uh, feedback, it's always the testimony about how VTN has blessed them, saved them, healed them. There are many people that get saved by watching VTN, and I hear people all the time. I, ha I saw a lady in the grocery store just the other day, and she stopped me, and she used to go to our church 20 years ago, I guess. And she stopped me, and she said, Pastor, I haven't seen you in so long. I just wanted to let you know that my husband and I teach a Sunday school class in another church. And she said, every time we teach, we re realize that everything we learned, we learn from you, and how much we appreciate the seed of the Word that you put in me. Now they're changing other people's lives. So when you support VTN, then you're planting seed in good soil. And number four and last, when you sow into VTN, you are going to reach a good, reap a good harvest personally. Um, good seed into good soil will reap a good harvest. Jeannie and I, along with the staff at VTN, pray for your harvest. You've given, and the scripture says it'll be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. You've given it, and it, what you've given, will be given back to you. And that's Luke 638. So I just want to share those things with you today on Arkansas Live. And uh, we are always recruiting and needing new partners so if you've never supported VTN and you'd like to today, 
then we'll put some information up on the screen, May, maybe give you a phone number. You can call us here at the office. This is not a telethon or a partner special or anything. This is Arkansas Live. Or you can go to our website, vtntv.com, and you can, uh, uh, you can donate online. You can donate through the mail. You can call us and say, I want to support VTN. Uh, this is a ministry that I trust. It's, I want to be a good steward, and I know you will be. It's good soil, and I know I'm going to reap a good harvest. So I just want to submit that to you today. Four reasons that we found out that our partners, know why they support VTN. And if you're not a partner, I'd encourage you to do so, because I believe God's going to bless you as he blesses VTN. He's going to bless you because you've supported this ministry. Okay, let's go to our regularly scheduled teaching now, and let's go back to John chapter 14. We're talking about exposed to a higher standard. What is the higher standard? Isaiah 55, 8, 9, God says, my thoughts are higher than your ways. Uh, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, and my ways are higher than your ways. Thoughts, plans, intentions, ways of thinking, ways, course of action, higher Lofty to soar, standard authority put to flight. You know, I think one of the things that has that I have noticed uh, over the years and more recently um, is the standards that I was raised with from my father, my family, my grandfather, my parents, grandparents. The standards that I was raised with uh, are are almost gone today. Uh, situational ethics. Do, do you know what, when you see on television, you see these weekly programs and they're called sitcoms. Do you know what, do you know what that means? Situational comedy, situational ethics. I heard Andrew Womack say the other day on his program that he, he was having a discussion with his granddaughter who was 16, I think, at the time. And they were talking about lying and she asked him, she said, Granddaddy, have you ever lied? He said, no. He, she said, Will you, would you ever lie? He said, no. She said, well, what if your life depended on it? He said, I still wouldn't lie. I'd just die and go to heaven. And then she said, what if my life depended on it? He said, I still couldn't lie. And she was shocked at that because she, he, he said this. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you what he said he said his granddaughter's being raised in a different culture where everything is relevant. Situational eth ethics, it's okay to lie if it fits the situation. And so these standards of, of truth, honor, justice, all of these things are, are slowly being eroded. Well, when you lose your standards there's, there's nothing stable anymore. This is why children are, are have problems today in families, and psychiatrists, psychologists try to explain this to people. Uh, a child is, is comforted when they are surrounded by boundaries and standards that will not change. They're threatened and fearful and angry when they can move challenges, standards, ideals, values. When they see that their parents aren't living standards, that's a fearful thing to them. And then it turns into anger and rebellion. So it's not easy to maintain standards. In my house growing up, my father set the standards and he and mama carried them out. They, they mirrored them to us. They lived them before us. Consequently, I grew up with standards. My daddy told me, he said, if you lie to me, I will spank you. That was when I was a child. He set that precedent. Lying is not acceptable in this house. <laughs> lying is not acceptable in this family. When I was 18 and had to decide whether to go to college, go to work, he told me, he said, there's another option. You can go in the military and serve your country. He said, that's part of the standard. And I was raised that way. Of course, having come out of the World War II generation, I was raised thinking this is what you do. 
My dad did this, I did this. So you grow up with certain standards. Well, when you're exposed to a higher standard, take it. Don't settle for the lower standard. Take the high standard. The reason that our culture is being dumbed down is because we have relaxed our standards. Well, in all the contention that you see today, the hatred, the bitterness, the fighting, the lying, the cheating, whatever, is due to the fact that there are those that are trying to maintain the standard and there are those that don't want the standard. So there's a war, there's a, there's a schism there, there's a friction. There are those that want to maintain the, the constitutional roots, the values, the standards of our republic, and then there are those that don't. The liberal philosophy, the socialist philosophy, is, is you, you change everything, uh, the government controls everything, the government runs everything, and you feed the government. That's socialism becomes communism. But conservatism wants to stay with the values of the founders of the Constitution. And that's the war that's going on right now on television every night, in politics. Everything that you see is, is traditional values and a biblical worldview against non-traditional values and a secular worldview. So to set a standard, you have to maintain the higher way. And that's what God is trying to get across to us. Now, uh, yesterday we finished talking about uh, the book of Acts, how Jesus said um, that he wanted us to receive the Holy Spirit and that power would anoint us to become witnesses unto him. <coughs> Excuse me. You even have Christians, you even have ministers that have, um, how would I say, uh, compromised the standard. Uh, it's been said by ministers that there are many ways to God. Jesus isn't the only way. Wrong. That's not what the Bible says. Uh, you, you know, when you start compromising standards, there's no end to it. You just keep on until there's nothing left. Uh, let's go over to John 14. And let's read what Jesus said to his disciples. He was preparing them for the Holy Spirit, the anointing that would empower them to come up to a higher standard. And he said in John 14, 16, I will pray the Father, he'll give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him, not neither knows him. Isn't that interesting? The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Truth. And Jesus said the world doesn't know him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. Then in verse 26, he says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. This is the new standard. This is the anointing. They saw Jesus for three and a half years operate in the anointing under the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now Jesus is getting ready to leave, and he told them, he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. I will not leave you orphans. Then John 16 in verse, 12, uh, verse 13, he says, Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that will he speak, and he'll show you things to come. The Holy Spirit is going to show us things to come. He'll glorify me, he'll receive a mine and show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, he shall take of mine and show it unto you. The Holy Spirit always glorifies and magnifies Jesus. He never magnifies himself. Now go over to Proverbs chapter 1. Remember, we're talking about 
exposed to a higher standard. There's a better way. There's a higher way. There's a better thought. You have to factor in the anointing. The anointing has to be a part of you growing up into this better way. And you have to learn to listen to the anointing. I was, I was reading uh, Proverbs one day. I, for, for years, I read, read it a chapter a day. There's 31 chapters, so you can read it you know, every day, every month. Um, in Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 6, I want you to listen to this. Remember, we're talking about a higher standard. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Now, the first three verses tell you what this book is all about. Here is instruction for life, for living, but this is a higher way of living. Instruction, wisdom, justice, judgment, equity, subtlety, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase in learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb, the interpretation, the words of the wise, and their dark sayings. Now, when I was studying this and meditating on every verse, the dark sayings was, was really referring to the things of God that have not been revealed yet. In other words, they're, they're covered to those that are reading it until the Holy Spirit reveals the truth to them. And that happens when you read the Word. The Holy Spirit reveals the light, the revelation of what God's saying. Paul said it this way in Corinthians. He said, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them. Otherwise, they're going to stay in darkness. Now, I was reading in uh, Proverbs chapter 3. Let's go over there verse 1 and 2. Remember, we're talking about a higher standard. A higher standard of health, a higher standard of wealth, a higher standard of wisdom, a higher standard of prosperity. There's everything that you and I deal with on a daily basis. God has a higher standard. There's a higher way. In prosperity, God's higher way is the tithe, the offering. Give and it shall be given. The um, Bible says work so you will have to give. Work is necessary so you'll have to give. The higher standard is the giving. But, but let's go back to Proverbs 3. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to you. Whoa, talk about health. Talk about life, longevity. Listen to this again. This is the higher standard. Forget not my word, but keep your heart. Keep my commandments. Uh, excuse me. Keep not my word, my law, my word, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life... And peace shall they add to you. The marginal reference says years of life. Now, you know, the average age, I guess, today, I, I was reading somewhere the other day, and they said that the average age of um, Americans today is about 76, 77 years. And then you go over to Psalm 90, and it talks about under the old covenant, under the law, it said 70 or 80 years by grace, by strength. But then you read Psalm 91, and it says you can live as long as you're satisfied. Uh, and then you can go back to the Old Testament. Moses was 120, and then Isaiah, 
I still forgot where it was. I think I wrote it down somewhere. It talks about a hundred, a hundred years. So you can go anywhere from a hundred to a hundred and twenty years. You can go 70, 80, 90, 100, 120, or you can live as long as you're satisfied. You determine. Now, there's certainly benefit <clears throat> in health, life. There's benefit in vitamins, exercise, eating right, good food, nutrition, uh, doctors, medicine. I mean, there's benefit in all of these things. But it's not the highest way. It's not the higher standard. The higher standard is what the Lord said to me. He said, son, I have a higher standard of living than vitamins and exercise. Now, we know we're supposed to do both. We're supposed to eat the food. The Bible said it's sanctified for the use of our bodies. It's the physical food. We know we're supposed to exercise, but the Bible says bodily exercise profits little. The little while that you have the body. But there's a higher way. What is the higher way? It says here the higher way is God's word keeping his commandments and it will produce length of days and long life, years of life. So here's the higher standard. <clears throat> um, the, the higher standard, let's go over and read 7 and 8. It continues, helps us. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. That's good. Good advice. It shall be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Talking about the higher standard of health. Listen to this. It shall be health or medicine. This is God's medicine. What is it? Fear the Lord and depart from evil. That's good medicine. His word is health, medicine to your flesh. And uh, then it says, it shall be health to your navel and marrow to your bones, which means or watering or moistening of your bones. So God has a health program. He has a uh, prosperity program. He has a deliverance program. He has a mental health program. He has, but his ways are higher than your ways. Have you ever wondered why that uh, when you start out searching or looking for nutrition or exercise or whatever. And if you started way back there, <clears throat> of course, in the military, they developed good exercise programs and reg regiments. I went through that in boot camp in the Navy and I was, I was healthier uh, when I got out than when I went in, I gained weight cause I was, you know, I was the 90 pound weakling. Uh, and, but when I came out, I weighed 174 pounds. And uh, it's it, it, I had muscle, and I was you know I was twenty years old, and you'd think you, you're in the prime of your life, but when you get into that regimen, you realize <laughs> you weren't really <laughs> in best health. But I was when I got out, three months of that of that training, and and the nutrition, the food, and you, you, we were raised with the the food pyramid. Well, then all of that changes as nutritionists gain knowledge and as <clears throat> doctors gain wisdom and knowledge and, and so forth. And you don't do the same exercises anymore. They say, Oh, you shouldn't do that. That'll hurt this or hurt that. And then the pyramids change that so we shouldn't eat that. You should eat this. You don't need to eat as many carbohydrates. You need to eat more proteins and blah, blah, blah. And so things change and you think, okay, we're coming up. I mean, the standards are changing. We're getting more information, more knowledge, more revelation. But God's even got a better plan than that. God's got a higher standard. His higher standard will produce long life. It's 
medicine to your flesh and marrow to your bones. That's a higher standard. And God says, come up to my standard. Come up to my way of doing things and my way of thinking. Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 17. Did you know that your body will tell you what things to eat and when and what things not to eat? It will if you learn to listen to it. Now, I'm not talking about being body-minded or (laughs) body-controlled. Because if you're... If your body is not disciplined and under subjection to your spirit, you'll, your body will wind up the donut shot every day. I'm not talking about letting your body rule you, but I'm talking about your body will tell you what it needs. But you can only discern that if you come up to the higher way and, and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 17. You say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand hath gotten me this wealth. But you shall remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant. God has a higher way of finances, a higher standard of wealth. It says that God will give you power to get wealth. God gives you the power. God gives you the wisdom and the knowledge to know what to do, what not to do. And uh, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 10 uh, helps us. It continues to give us knowledge. Proverbs 10, 22. I think I taught on this not too long ago. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he has no sorrow with it. So the blessing... The, 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 I taught a whole week on this. The blessing is what makes you rich, is what prospers you. This is a higher way. It's not by the sweat of your brow. It's, it's the blessing of the Lord. It's a higher standard for wealth. And then you go to Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10, and, and you see that God instituted uh, the tithe. That was his method. We're not going to have time to read it because our time is just about gone. We'll pick up here tomorrow. Remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and where you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at vtntv.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN, your Arkansas Christian connection. And follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell.